Well, good morning and welcome to the Michael Rowan Ministries Sunday morning worship experience. I'm Pastor Michael Rowan, and as always, we are so thrilled that you'd stop by and spend some time with us today in our church service online. Out of all the variety, thousands and hundreds of thousands of streaming services all over the world, you're hanging out with us, and that means so much to us. We're going to worship the Lord today. I feel like I have a rhema on time word for you, so we're going to jump right into things with a great song from Chris Tomlin. Many of you know it. It's simply entitled Jesus. So get up right now and wherever you're at, in your bedroom, your den, your kitchen, if you're watching on an iPad, a phone, or a laptop, let's lift our hands. And as the Bible says, let's worship the Lord together. We'll be back in just a few moments. God bless you. There is a truth older than the ages there is a promise of things yet to come there is one born for our salvation jesus there is a light that overwhelms the darkness there is a king chains that bind us, Jesus, Jesus, who walks on the waters, who speaks to the sea, who stands in the fire beside me, he rose like a lion, he bled. Wow, what a powerful anthem from Chris Tomlin. Messiah, my Savior, 
There is power in your name. You're my rock. You're my redeemer. There's power in your name. You walk on the waters, you speak to the sea, and he stands in the fire beside me. Aren't you glad this morning that there's no other name but the name of Jesus? And so thank you once again for worshiping with us today. Before I get into this morning's lesson and teaching, would you just take a few moments to start a watch party or make sure that you share the service on your page? Uh, let's do everything we can as the body of Christ to get the word out. So many people, especially now in uh, this May month of 2020, are needing hope, needing encouragement, still battling a lot of fear and depression and anxiety. We're going to address a little bit of that today. But uh, as you've heard me say in weeks past, we can't uh, join together all under one roof, which is quickly changing. And we're excited about that. But no matter where we're at, whether it be at 25%, 50%, when we can all come back together, we are still, each and every Sunday, gathering together under one name, and that's the name of Jesus. So thank you for being with us today. You know, I uh, didn't want to really preach today as much as kind of share from my heart, and I think this will minister to you today. I've been talking with a lot of pastors, ministries, churches, families, uh, single parents and moms and uh, families that are homeschooling that have never homeschooled before. There's a lot going on uh, that is keeping us disconnected for now. And so I'm so thankful, as you've heard me say every Sunday morning worship experience, for the power of the media and live stream so we can get as connected as possible. Uh, obviously here in Texas, just as early as 48 hours ago, uh, our state opened back up. And I believe that God is starting to uh, bring hope and encouragement and health to our nation. I believe state after state and then country after country. I believe we're about to see a massive turnaround. And I believe that God has used this crisis to wake us up to say, I want you all to look at me again. Uh, our help comes from the Lord. But if I were to ask you uh, during this day and age, what right now? In the midst of this pandemic, and even though there's been tremendous healing and there's been lots of glimmers of light, there's still a, a lot of concerns in our nation and in our world. And so what do you think would be uh, the number one emotion right now that people would struggle with? I know some of you might say, well, Pastor, I, it would have to be anxiety. Uh, maybe it's depression or guilt. Sociologists tell us that the most common emotional pain, especially in our culture today, is loneliness. And I think you can see by uh, so many social media outlets that are out there today. Think about it. You've got Facebook, you've got Twitter, you've got Instagram, you've got Snapchat. You've obviously, unless been under a rock somewhere, know that TikTok has now exploded and is all over the world. And what it's really doing is it's allowing people to connect. It's allowing people to talk, uh, make comments, like posts. Sometimes we'll scroll our social media and you'll find that there's lots uh, of thought provoking posts, lots of thought provoking comments. You can scroll on that same social media avenue an hour later and you'll see lots of things that will bring a giggle to you or that are used for funniness or humor. So uh, what it's doing is it's connecting people that desperately want to be together. You do realize we were created to be together. And I believe that that's why this pandemic has been so difficult for so many. Uh, the internet, which is connecting on a daily basis, hundreds of millions of people, and some of our statistics say they're signing up at over 2 million every month. So we see that our world is wanting to connect. Look at commercials. There are beer commercials. There are uh, commercials where they're uh, in parties and people are laughing and they're having a great time. And uh, there used to be a catchphrase in one beer commercial that says, it doesn't get any better than this. Can I tell you today, they're not selling beer. They're not selling the taste of beer. What they're selling is, if you drink this beverage, you're going to have fun. If you drink this beverage, you're going to have friends and you're going to be happy. That's what our world is longing for today. So what does God have to say about loneliness? He has a lot to say about it. Genesis chapter two and verse 18, literally the second book of the Bible, he said, it isn't good for man to be alone. You see, God had put Adam in the garden of Eden where everything was perfect. The garden of Eden was paradise. Everything he could have ever possibly wanted was there, but there was no problems, there was no sin. 
There was no heartaches. There was no suffering. Yet the first thing that God saw in the middle of this paradise that wasn't good was loneliness. Even he said to uh, Eve, he said, and Adam and Eve, he said, there in Eden, it's not good for man to be alone. So I think we can see that God hates loneliness. God doesn't want you to feel like you're all by yourself. And I want to encourage someone today that in the midst of this situation of quarantines and homeschooling and lots of public events that have been canceled, uh, such as sporting events and concerts and even something as simple as going out to eat with your family have become a struggle. And even though things are opening up, uh, it's, it's a brand new ball game. He's provided, I believe for us today, three resources to reduce the pain of uh, struggling with loneliness and being disconnected from our family and friends during this time. He's given us a plan to live for. He's given us people to live with and he's given us his presence to live in. So let me encourage somebody today, when you're focusing on God's plan for your life, you don't have a lot of time to have a pity party. Uh, I'm focusing on God's plan for my life. He's also given me people to live with and that's the body of Christ. The church is the family of God. Many of you know that in many churches, you'll hear sister so-and-so or brother so-and-so, that's brother so-and-so, because we are the family of God. We are our brothers and sisters in Christ. And so when you belong to Jesus, you immediately belong to a family. Uh, he puts the lonely in families. And so the third resource I wanna focus on is he gives us his presence to live in. Can someone hold on to what I'm about to say? Psalm 139 says, where can I go from your presence? And the answer is nowhere. Did you know that you can never escape God's presence? He is everywhere. I can't, I can't escape God's presence. He's omnipresent. He's everywhere at the same time. There's no place in the universe. I don't care what this COVID-19 pandemic has put stipulations on. I don't care uh, that every time we turn on the TV, they say you can go here, you can't go there, you can't go here, you can't go there. If you're a believer, Jesus, my God, the Holy Spirit, live and dwell inside of you. And you know what? That's a fantastic promise. Now, that's useless to you unless you actually realize it and accept his presence in your life. And so how do I realize and recognize that God's presence is in my life so that I can take advantage of these things. And here's our teaching today. I'm gonna to give you four short points. Not gonna be a long word, but a strong word. And what we wanna do is when we tune into God and we realize that he's with you all the time and you can sense that, four things become true in your life. The first thing is he's gonna help us. He's going to help you out today. Isaiah 41.10, don't worry because I'm with you. Don't be afraid because I'm your God. I will make you strong and help you. And the scripture ends by saying, I will support you. So there's three things that we see right there in that scripture. He'll make us strong. He'll help us out. And he'll support us if we realize that he is with us. Someone today uh, has been going through a divorce. You're watching this right now. Someone today has been told that uh, they've lost their business, that they've worked hard for. Uh, maybe it was passed down from generation to generation. Some of you are struggling. Am I going to be able to keep my home? Am I going to be able to pay my bills? Am I going to be able to make enough money? When is this situation gonna turn around so that life can get back to normal? Well, I believe that we realize that he's making us strong He's helping us out and he's supporting us. He's supporting us. He said, I will support you. And so no matter what you face today, you don't have to face it alone. Uh, there's a difference between being alone and being lonely. Oh, let that resonate with someone today. There's a difference between being alone and being lonely. If God is with you and his presence is inside of you, you may be alone, but you will never be lonely. A lot of times loneliness and isolation comes in our life from things that we didn't invite in. Uh, I don't think any of us saw this COVID-19, this coronavirus that has paralyzed our world. I don't think anyone saw that coming, but yet there's many things in our life that cause us to feel isolated, perhaps uh, a death of a loved one. 
perhaps uh, people get lonely, as I mentioned a few moments ago, because of a divorce. Maybe uh, you've been deserted. Maybe you've been abandoned. Maybe there are people in your life that you thought would be there for you and through trials or just the busyness of life or the circumstances in our nation today, um, people that you thought would always be there aren't there. What do you do when you go through seasons uh, in your life where loneliness is forced on you? You didn't ask for it. But remember that my God says he will never abandon us. Psalm 27 and 10 says, if my mother and father leave me, the Lord will take me in. Isn't that amazing? He's even a father to the fatherless. 2 Corinthians 4, 9, God never abandons us. Let me look right into the screen today and say to somebody watching right now, right now, he'll never abandon you. He, he's never going to walk out on you. Uh, if you realize that his presence is with you, he will help you out. Here's the second thing that he's going to do for us today. He'll calm us down. Did you know that the presence of God is a great stress reliever? It's a great stabilizer in my life when crisis has come. You know, I have a friend that's got a monster truck and he's got these huge shocks inside the wheel wells. And no matter what the surface of the road, no matter what kind of holes or potholes or obstacles or rough terrain, man, when he just goes across on that truck, those shocks, that they, they basically absorb the jolts that the person inside the cab of that truck would feel because of the rough terrain. That's what God does. He calms us down. He, he, he is a shock absorber to the things in life that come our way. What do we do when winds come and, and shake us off our feet? And they inevitably happen. There are so many people right now that were not mentally, uh, maybe even physically or financially or spiritually ready for the things that have taken place in our world. What do you do? You recognize God's presence in your life and you say, Lord, calm me down. When is loneliness most difficult at night? It seems like I get more messages and texts and emails from people uh, at night when all the busyness of the day and the stress of the day is gone. And, and we're, we tend to allow fear and loneliness and, and anxiety to intensify and exaggerate uh, but I promise you, God says, if you'll sense his presence today, you'll calm down. Psalm 4 and 8, I will lie down in peace and sleep. For though I am alone, O Lord, you will keep me safe. In Psalm 31 and verse 20, he says that you protect me with your presence. Isn't that amazing today? So when we recognize that God is always with us, always with us in our life, one thing we'll do is realize that he helps us out. The second thing we'll realize that he will calm us down. Here's the third thing today, he'll cheer you up. I don't know about you, but I could, I could use a little cheering up. Um, man, with the ministry uh, here in Dallas and uh, our traveling and our crusades and our comedy night crusades and so many things that have been temporarily yanked out from underneath us, uh, indefinitely until we see how this is going to all pan out. Uh, there's been times in my life where uh, in the last few weeks I've needed a little cheering up. But he says when we go through tough times, he'll cheer us up if we recognize his presence. Note in all these four things, friends, we've got to recognize his presence in our lives. Then we will recognize these four things. But Psalm uh, 16, verses 8 and 9. I keep the Lord before me always because he's close by my side. I will not hurt. Here it is. So I rejoice. He cheers us up. And I'm glad. He makes us happy. Even my body has hope, is what the psalmist says. Where is God when it hurts? Have you ever asked yourself that? Where is God when it hurts? That's a good question. Where he's always been. He'll never leave you. He'll never forsake you. And the issue is to recognize and realize and sense his presence in our lives. You see, because when you're alone or when you feel isolated from the world because of this pandemic going on in our nation today, you have two choices. You can choose to focus on loneliness 
and have a pity party. Oh man, I can't go outside. I can't go out to eat. I can't go to the movies. I can't go to a concert. You know, my children can't go back to school for a while. I can't do this. I can't do that. Man, I just feel like I need to be around people. Poor me. Nobody loves me. You can choose to do that. Or you can focus on the fact that God has never left you. He has been with us every step of the way. When this pandemic broke out, when things got tough, now things are turning around and starting to even get a little bit better. But through every step of the way, He has been with us. How do we know when someone is walking in the presence of God? Well, it's easy. They're full of joy. Have you ever been around someone full of the presence of God? It's so easy to discern. It's so visible. You can see it. You can hear it in their voice. There's joy, unspeakable and full of glory in their life. So God says, recognize my presence in your life. Number one, I will help you out. Number two, I will calm you down. Number three, I will cheer you up if you recognize that I never, ever will leave you or forsake you. Some of you have been having such a difficult time in these last few weeks and you've been discouraged. Have you, have you ever had one of those weeks or one of those days? Well, guess what? We've had one of those months. Some people might say 2020 might be one of those years. Where is God? He's with you. He's with you right now. The Lord, the Bible says, is close to the brokenhearted and he saves those whose spirits have been crushed. So you know what he's going to do? He's going to help me out. He's going to calm me down. He's going to cheer me up. And here's the best part of this whole entire teaching today. He'll see me through. My God, your God, who is always with us, even in the darkest of times, he will see us through. There's a scripture in Isaiah, I believe it's the 43rd chapter, that says, when you go through deep waters and great troubles, I will be with you. When you go through rivers of difficulty, you will not drown. Boy, my God, if there's ever been a verse for us today, is right there. He says, when you go through deep waters and great troubles, that would be our situation today. He says, I will be with you. He said, when you go through rivers of difficulty, have you been through any rivers of difficulty lately? Have you been through rivers of difficulty with your family and your marriage, with your finances, with your home? Questioning day after day, when is this going to end? How am I going to survive through this? It says, you will not drown. I don't care how many rivers of difficulty you've been through or you're wading through right now. My God says you won't drown. He'll see us through. Even when I feel like I can't go another day, he'll see us through. When I feel like I can't put one foot in, in front of the other, he's going to see me through. When I'm crushed, when I've lost it, when some of you have been ready to throw in the towel, when you feel that, the good news is God is with you. He's with you today. Would you like to be able to face this world and this pandemic in your life with that kind of confidence, with that kind of serenity, with that kind of peace? Uh, I don't know what the future holds. I get phone calls day after day after day saying, you know what, Pastor, I don't know what the future holds. Uh, and I don't either, but I know who holds the future. I know who has the future in the palm of his hand. And I can't always control what happens in my life. You can't always control what happens to you. But I can tell you this, you can control your response. You can't always have power over everything that is done to you or things that take place in your life, but you can control how you respond. And while sometimes being alone in certain seasons of our life is unavoidable, sometimes feeling like, you know, we're up against the world all by ourselves is unavoidable. When we spend time uh, with him, even though loneliness is, a, uh, uh, being alone isn't avoidable, but loneliness is when you tap into the resources of God's plan, God's people, his presence tough times are going to come. It's inevitable. But you know what? You'll have Christ right there with you. And it's in that moment that I'm speaking to someone today. I can feel it. I'm speaking to someone right now. I believe that you'll see that he's there to help you out. He's there to lift you up, cheer you up, calm you down, and most importantly, see you through. He wants to see you through. 
My God wants to give you some joy and some peace and some outrageous happiness that no one else can give you. Not money, not a relationship, nothing in this world can give you what my God can give you. Uh, you know, there are uh, classic Billy Graham sermons. And I remember in one of the Billy Graham sermons, him saying, I can't see the wind. He said, I can feel the wind, but I can't see it. And when I feel the wind, even though I can't see it, I know that it's there. Uh, how powerful is that? There are uh, radio and television waves going through the air all the time. You can't see them, but that doesn't mean that they're not there. You can't see God, but my faith rises up and lets me know, I know he's there. Even though I can't see him, I know he's there. But if you have that right mechanism, if you have the right radio, the right television, you can tune in uh, and take advantage of those radio or television waves. All of a sudden, they, the picture shows up on your television. If you have wireless internet or uh, any type of Wi-Fi and you connect and right now, you're being able to watch me. Uh, maybe you just joined us. I've been here for the last 30 minutes, but maybe when you took the initiative to tune in and take advantage of it, here I am. It's the same thing with God. You can't take advantage of his presence until you tune into him. Can I challenge you today? If you don't know him, know that he's present in your life. He's all around us. If you're a believer, you already know this. He's in you, but you got to tune in in order for him to help you out, to see you through, to lift you up, to calm you down. I hope this word just shared from my heart encouraged someone today. I pray that there be a desire strongly in your heart to get to know him if you don't know him. If you do know him, get to know him better. But if you are here today, it's a simple prayer that just says, Lord Jesus, I love you. Uh, I believe that you came, you died, you rose again. Father, thank you for the, for the gift of your son, Jesus. And Father, even though that was my guilt and my shame, I ask, Lord Jesus, that you come into my heart, come into my life, consume me with your presence, place my name in that Lamb's book of life, and I'll be careful to give you all the praise. In Jesus' name, amen. We believe if you prayed that simple prayer, that you are saved. And now that means you have a brand new family, a brand new family, and you'll never be alone. And even though we can't all come together as much physically as we'd like to right now, our God is with each and every one of us. And that's something for you to hold on to today on this Sunday morning service. Thank you so much for joining us. Again, please uh, share this. Uh, maybe even after the broadcast is over, just replay it, start a watch party. Uh, there's someone out there that you know, maybe it's a friend or a neighbor next door. Um, maybe it's a family member or a coworker, uh, someone that you know uh, that has really needed a word like this. Would you share it with them today? Maybe even send them a text and say, hey, go to michaelrowanministries.com and check out the service uh, on our website. Uh, you can watch and review the service there. You can see it on our public figure page, Michael Rowan Ministries on Facebook. And you can obviously also see it on my personal and Stephanie's personal page. Before we're done today, we're going to give all of you an opportunity to sow a seed into our ministry. Uh, this is so important. It's so vital. Uh, I've always been one to be very transparent uh, and uh, just say it like it is. Uh, a couple of months ago, uh, ish or a little less when we started our services. Uh, we had some people that were faithful, not only in watching the service and worshiping with us, but also in sowing a seed and giving. Uh, we have seen that over the last few weeks uh, slowly decline. And uh, uh, the difference between our ministry and perhaps the church you go to is most churches and pastors that I've talked to, uh, even though they're not meeting together right now, their congregation is still watching online and their congregations are still giving online. We don't have, per se, a congregation. I don't pastor a church. Many of you know that uh, are familiar with our ministry. We're evangelists. And so we travel 52 weeks a year all over the world. And that's how this ministry thrives and survives. We can't do that right now. And so other than just some faithful supporters, 
some generous donations from some of my pastoral friends and churches. It's just up to folks like you that watch our service on social media and then say, you know what, we want to help Michael and Stephanie and the ministry keep their heads above water during this critical time. Uh, there are multiple ways that you can do it. You can go to michaelrowanministries.com. Uh, there's a donate tab there. You can give there. You can text any amount to 937-240-5118. You can pay on Facebook. Obviously, it'd be difficult to do that right at this moment, but in just a couple of moments when this broadcast is over, through Facebook Messenger, you can sow a seed with Facebook Pay. And last and not least, obviously, Venmo. Uh, at MR Ministries. Michael Rowan Ministries is our Venmo account. Would you take a few moments, just just a few moments, even right now, if you needed to go find your wallet or your checkbook or your, uh, you know, your social media device and getting online, whatever it is, would you take a few moments and help us today? Uh, it helps our ministry to move forward. And then when this whole thing is lifted, and we get back to doing what we do, we get to see you hopefully face to face. Go to michaelrowanministries.com and from June on, our entire ministry schedule is there on our itinerary. We would love to finally get to see you face to face instead of just on the screen. Let me bless you before we're done. Put your hands out like this. That's the way we do it here in our ministry. Your hands are outstretched, palms up because you're going to receive it. I put my hands forward because I give it to you. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord lift his countenance upon you and give you peace. May he cover you with his name, the name of Jesus. Father, for everyone watching this broadcast right now, for everyone listening or watching a rebroadcast or a watch party, whether it be on Facebook or uh, michaelroadministries.com or on YouTube, Father, I pray that you would pour out blessings upon their life that cannot be contained. Bless their families, their homes, their physical health, their finances, their hearts, their minds, their spirits. And Lord, may we all realize through this teaching today, you'll never leave us, you'll never forsake us. You are with us all the time. You're so good to us all the time. And for that, we give you our hearts, our lives, and we give you our praise in Jesus' name. And everyone said out there, Amen. Thank you so much for joining us again. Share, share, share this message. Go right now. We'll put it up one final time at the very end. All the different ways that you can give are probably there right now. Just go and sow a seed into our ministry and we thank you for it. Stay encouraged. Peace over pandemic. Praise over pandemic and faith over fear. We're coming out of this, guys. God bless you. We'll see you next week.